Hey everyone, welcome back to Coffee with Blair. I'm really glad that you made it here today and thanks for joining me. Today, we're in day five of the 30 day profit challenge. In today's topic, we're gonna to talk about units per org. Now, for those of you that have been tuning in for the last few days, thank you for coming in by and joining me in this Coffee Webinar series. You know, I've been trying to make these as short, sweet, and to the point for you as possible. So hopefully you're finding value out of them. So today we're gonna to dive into units per order and take a look at how does that impact your profit for your e-commerce business. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So if you're called, There we go. So if you recall last lesson, what we talked a bit about is we talked a bit about the product margin tree and we've been stepping our way through the product margin tree. So we started at the top where we looked at all the sales revenue and how that breaks down to average order value, orders, units, average re unit revenue, units per order in the middle, and you got your cost of goods sold and your product margin. We also showed you the sister order margin tree that we're getting get into in a few other lessons time, but for now, Today, what we're gonna talk a bit about this guy right in the middle here, this average units per order. So last time we looked at average order value. Again, the formula for average order value is sales revenue over your orders. So if you take your $1,000 of sales revenue divided by 4,000 orders, you're gonna get $250 in average order value. So today, we're gonna to take a look at that same million dollars in sales revenue and see how that breaks down into your units per order. So from the right-hand side of things, you could look at a one angle and you could say, well, if you took your 10,000 units sold divided by your 4,000 in orders, you're going to get a 2.5 units per order. Now that's the conventional way that you would look at units per order. It's often also called average quantity. So I wanted to call that out here is if you've ever heard the term average quantity versus units per order, you may see it's similarly used. I like to use units per order here because it actually talks about exactly what it is, units per order. And that's how the math is worked out here. Now, the other way you could look at it on the other equation, if you were calling it average quantity, and on the other side of our, our product margin tree, you'll notice that you could also do the math the same way. So if you took your average order value and then took your average unit revenue and divided 250 by the 100, you get the same number as your 2.5, or in this case, it could be called your average quantity or average units per order. So you can see how the math works either way. So, you know, depending on how you want to look at it, we're going to look at both scenarios here on the, on the product margin tree and see how it influences both sides of the equation. Now, if we increase our average quantity or increase that number of units per order, you're going to see how it works here. So if we take that 2.5 and we increase it to 2.75 now, and let's add 10% to it, <coughs> what you're going to find is on the left-hand side of the equation, you're gonna get an extra 10% of average order value. So that goes from 250 up to 275. But on the right-hand side of the equation, you can see that it also can add you another 10% of quantity on your units sold. Both of those will add up then to give you 10% overall on your top line sales revenue of $1.1 million, up from the previous $1 million we had. So now similarly, if we add in the other scenario of our cost of goods sold at the bottom of the product margin tree and our quantity now, you can see that that increases our total product margin from previously at $750,000, now up an additional 10% as well, or in this case, another $75,000 in gross mar product margin. So you can see how the math works, right? So let's go through that scenario again. This time around, we're gonna look at a 10% growth on your units per order. So again, trying to increase the number of quantity of products that are on the order. We're also gonna add in a 10% on the order side of the equation. And then what happens is if you layer in your 10% on your average order value, what that stacks up to be is you start seeing the compounding effect here where our quantity of the actual unit sold goes up 10%. Our sales revenue to the top line now takes the combined 10% of the average order value, your 10% of your orders, combined to be 21% on the sales revenue side of the equation. And then similarly on your total product margin down in the right-hand corner, 
you can see here that we've also increased our total project margin by 21%. So this just goes to show you that your units for order is probably one of the most impactful parts of your e-commerce product margin tree that will increase your revenues, but also is gonna increase your bottom line total product margin. So that's kind of a very short and sweet one. I appreciate you taking the day off today and not tuning into this live webinar series. Today was meant to be short, sweet and to the point, but again, it's really talking about your units per order or your average quantity. So tomorrow we're gonna to look at the final step of the average of the product margin tree, and we're gonna look at average product margin. And what average product margin is, is basically the secret sauce of this whole formula for the product margin tree. So I hope you tune in tomorrow or tune in the next time and tune in to learn more about average product margin. Thanks for watching today and have a great day.